Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. In this episode, we're going to be covering variables in C Sharp. Believe it or not, you've been working with variables your whole life. Variables are a way that we contain data and manipulate data within C Sharp. Now don't freak out. You've actually been well acquainted with variables. In fact, let's take a look at this following example. Here you can see we have x equals 1, y equals 2. Now what would z equal if x plus y? Well, the answer is 3. And the reason for that is we substitute the numbers for those letters. x would equal 1, y would equal 2. And then when we add them together, it becomes 3. And that value is assigned to z. So z equals 3. And this is exactly how variables work inside of C sharp. We come up with the name of a variable, we put an equal sign, and then we put the value of that variable after the equal sign. And of course, we always end our statements with a semicolon. Now C sharp is a little bit different in regards is that it needs to know what kind of variable you're using. After all, to the computer, variables are just a collection of one and zeros, so it needs a hint. And we do this by providing a type. A type simply describes what type of variable we're working with. In the case of text, we would use the type string. And we would type out string. And then after the name string, we would put in the name of the variable, followed by an equal sign, and then the actual value of that variable. And of course, we'll always end it off with a semicolon. Some of you may be wondering why use string? You can think of string as a string of characters. Now there's a whole lot of other types we can use as well. For instance, for numbers, we would use int, which is short for integer. Now I'll be covering types in depth in the next video. But for now, just remember, when working with text, you're going to use a string type. And when working with numbers, you're going to use an int type. Let's see this in action. Here we're back in our project. We have it open. And we're going to open up our Hello World script. Here's where we last left off. We have the on enable, I am enabled, and on disable, Hello World. We're going to delete the on disable now. And we're going to provide some of our own code here. Now, first, I'm going to create a variable to encapsulate the name of a game. So to do this, I'm going to type string, like you saw earlier. And you can see it turns blue, which indicates that this is a keyword. Next, I'm going to type in the name of the variable. Now, C Sharp is a little particular when it comes to naming things. When it comes to naming things, you have to be a little bit particular. There is a convention in place. Now you could go ahead and go off and name whatever thing you want and go by your own convention. But if you've ever worked with other C sharp programmers, they'll be somewhat confused with how you approach code throughout this series. I'll be walking you through standard naming convention so that if you work on other C sharp projects, you'll be able to quickly understand what's going on. Now in this example, we're going to provide the variable name of game name and look how I write this. I'm going to start with the lowercase g. There is a particular reason for this, which you'll understand as you go through the series. For now, just follow along with me. And then you type game, like so. Now we're going to provide a name. And I'm going to uppercase this. And I'll provide name like this. So you can see this is one word that's game name with a capital N. If I was going to provide another word, say game name description, Notice how I put a capital D. This is what we call camel case. In fact, this is actually lower camel case. This is what we would call upper camel case. But for now, we're going to do lower camel case, like so. Now keep in mind that if you created another variable, for instance, if I typed string like this, and I typed game name description, these would be two different variables. And the reason for that is because I'm using a lower case here and an upper case here. So it's very important how you name your variables. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this line and we're going to delete description and semicolon. 
and then I'll put in equal sign. And after which case, I'm going to put my open quotation mark. And for the game name, I'm going to write Half-Life. Again, with our statements, we always close with a semicolon. Next, I'm going to provide a price, which is going to be in dollars. To do this, I'm going to use an integer. So I'll type int, and we'll just write price like so. And we'll say this is $10 on Steam. Awesome. Now I have two variables, one that contains the name of the game and the other which contains the price. At this point, I want to print out the result of these variables. And to do this, I'm going to be using a debug log statement. So I'll type debug.log, and this is all review, and we'll write the game. Now we're going to provide the name of the game from the variable itself. And the way we do this is that we close our quotation mark here, and then we write a plus sign. A plus sign is a type of operator, and I'll be covering operators later in this series. But for now, you can think of a plus sign as combining these variables with this text we're writing. So here I'm putting plus game name, and notice I'm putting another plus sign and a new quotation mark. I'm also adding a space. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Is, and I'm going to do the same again. This time I'm going to write price. Then we'll write dollars like so. So the game, game name, is price dollars. And that will print out the game Half-Life is $10. Let's see this in action. And now I'm going to run our game. Here we'll open up the console. You can see it says I am enabled. We're going to select our cube and now we're going to deselect it. The game Half-Life is $10. Now earlier I mentioned there was a reason we put spaces between the is right here in the actual game name. Let's see what happens if I delete these spaces like so. And now let's run our, let's run our game again. I'm gonna select our cube and now let's disable it. Here you can see the game Half-Life is $10. Those spaces gave us breathing room, otherwise the variable was compacted against the words we had just written. One of the nice things that Unity allows us to do is to change our variables while our game is running. Let's see an example of this. Back here in Visual Studio, I'm going to scroll up just underneath the public class Hello World. I'm going to start, now I'm going to declare the variables that we just worked with. First, I'm going to use a keyword called public. Again, don't worry too much about this now. You'll learn about the public keyword in a later video, but you'll be able to see what it does in action for us in a few moments. I'm going to type public and then string and game name like so. And I'm going to type public int and we'll put price. Now I'm going to scroll back down here and delete these variables. So instead of using the variables that were declared in on disable, we're going to be using these variables over here. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to switch back to Unity. Here we are. And if you look down over here, you'll notice that we now have a game name field and we have a price field. Here's where we can put in, say, Half-Life. And let's say it's went, and let's say there's a summer sale and it's now $5. I'm going to run our game. I'm going to switch to the console and we're going to disable our cube. The game Half-Life is $5. One of the nice things of working with variables in Unity is that we can change the values of our variables while we are testing our game. In this case, while the game is still running, I'm going to select this and we'll type Minecraft. And for a price, we'll say $30, like so. Now watch, I haven't stopped my game. My game is still playing. I'm going to enable the cube. And you can see I am enabled. Now I'm going to disable the cube. And it says the game Minecraft is $30. It grabbed this information from the inspector and updated our game in real time. 
Now watch when I stop the game. You'll see that the changes that we made have now been reverted. Instead of being Minecraft, our game name is Half-Life and the price is $5. Well, that's the end of this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a couple new variables. I want you to create another game name, and I want you to provide the amount of stars that game had received. When you disable the cube, I want you to provide the sentence, the, then put in your new game name, received, and then provide the amount of stars, stars. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.